Hi, Boker Tov, and Shalom, everyone. That is Hebrew for good morning. Um, I am finally back in my office. Um, it was a real mess in here uh, for a while because um, I was sorting through all the books. Um, for anyone who um, cannot um, see the screen. Um, I used to have a big white bookshelf uh, behind me in my office, um, which is where I do a lot of my filming. And I was sorting through all those books and I'm in the process of um, re-homing um, the books that I can no longer read. If it's something I'm, I wouldn't read anyway. Um, I'm keeping some of the books um, that I would read if I could um, for research and stuff um, because I can um, get a desktop magnifier, um, you know, there and there are other options for reading stuff like that if I absolutely want to. Um, so yeah, that bookshelf is now downstairs and now I have a big space behind me that I'm trying to figure out what to do with. Um, I'll move over here so you can see. I do have one thing I made. This is a um, a wall hanging. It's behind me. Um, the wall in my office is kind of a light bluish, maybe give it a teal. Um, and um, the art behind me is a wall hanging that I made. I took a big stick and I hung um, some pieces of fabric and I crocheted um, some pieces with different textures of yarn. Um, and I, I like the way it looks and I also like um, having something I can touch. You know, I can get up and I can walk around and um, touch it if I just, you know, need a mental break or I feel like I'm disassociating and need to go back in my body. So yeah, it's it's nice. I'm probably gonna put up some more things um, like that. And then on my other side, I have um, the shelf that's always been there. I call that my shelf of inspirational people. I have some figurines of different um, historical figures. The tall black one, um, you can if you can kind of see the tall black shape, that's Ida B. Wells. Um, and I have some other ones too. I need to do a tour of that shelf um, sometimes, uh, sometime, sorry. Um, so uh, yeah, um, so what I'm doing right now is I am sorting through um, cards that people have sent me um, over the years. And what I'm doing is I am going through through and the ones where I can't easily read the writing anymore. Um, uh, cursive is really hard, light colored pens are really hard. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going in and I am writing down the contents of the card um, on an index card with a thick pen in my writing, which I can still read. Um, and then I'm paper clipping um, my my translation, if you will, on the inside of the card. Um, so um, while I'm chatting with you guys here, I'm going through and sorting the ones I want to keep and the ones that need translating and all that. Um, if I can't read what's on the cover, um, I'm writing the text on the cover next to it in a way I can read. So on this one, um, the text is at the top and um, it's in this cursive kind of font. Um, it's very pretty. I just can't read it anymore, <laughs> uh, not easily. So I have a bright desk lamp on off to the side and I'm shining that right on the card and then um, this one has a really light background, so um, I wrote the quote um, in a, bl a black Sharpie. Um, and for cards with darker covers where I struggle to read it, I'll figure something out. I've got my ways. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about, um, you know, I identity and 
how I think I've really kind of been having, for lack of better word, an identity crisis, I guess, um, over the past year. Um, for context, um, October 7th was three weeks before the IHOP Casey news broke. Um, so I was like reeling um, after October 7th and I was, I was nowhere near processing that and then I have Casey happened and my loved ones and my therapist have told me um, that they noticed a definite downward trajectory decline um, in my mental health, my demeanor, whatever. Um, and I really started to see that for myself um, after we reached the point where IHOP was starting to crumble. Um, and I, I feel like I really lost myself um, during that time. It was very much all hands on deck and I am not sorry I got involved. Um, they needed the survivors to lead that movement. Um, think of a cult as a complex burning building with a ton of people trapped inside. Um, so in the case of like a literal building fire, um, the firefighters will uh, try to somehow get some sort of blueprint of the building so they can figure out how to get in and try to get people out. Um, think of it as like the survivors are the expert on the blueprint and how to get in the building and how to get everyone out. And so like it needed to be us. It, it absolutely um, needed to be us. Um, and I'm not sorry I got involved. Um, I kind of wish I'd been able to have um, a little more balance, but like I said, it was, I mean, I was, <laughs> there's no guidebook on how to, you know, deal with this shit, right? So I was, so I was just, um, I was just, uh, sorry, trying, <laughs> trying to get through. And now that that's done, I feel like I'm sort of coming up for air a bit um and trying to figure out um you know where I'm at what I want next you know for every aspect of my life I guess um and one thing that's really that I'm really waking up to is how much my vision has changed and how severe the struggles have gotten. Um, it's frustrating because um, ocular misalignment and midriasis, that means um, my eyes don't sit straight. I don't know if you can tell. Um, my, so ocular misalignment and then midriasis, which is my pupils are too big. So there's way too much light getting in. I'm gonna post another video about all that soon. Um, anyway, I didn't realize how difficult life had gotten because of how much my sight had changed. Um, that's the shitty part about things coming on gradually. Like sometimes you just don't even notice. And I do get yearly eye exams, but even then you just, you can't always tell, you know? And so sometimes, you know, you need that outside perspective, you know, to help you realize like, oh, I can't read this or I can't see that as easily anymore. Um, and, I am finally getting to a point of sort of accepting that that's where things are at. For a while, I was kind of holding on to a false hope of like, um, you know, like there will be, I'll see the way I used to, you know, there will be a pill, an operation, a pair of glasses, something that will bring my vision back to, you know, run of the mill vision correction, which is, you know, what I'd been using since I was like 10. And I'm realizing now that that's like, I was wrong. That's not the case. Um, you know, medical science does advance very quickly now. And, you know, maybe someday 
there will be a breakthrough treatment, but there isn't right now. And, um, you know, I'm 36. I feel old sometimes because with everything I've been through, I sometimes feel like I'm twice my age, but I'm not that old, you know. I hopefully, God willing, have a lot of life left and um, I, you know, shit is getting real right now with politics and October 7th and all that, but in terms of my own mental health, like, it's kind of leveling out and, like, I, I could get to a point of enjoying life at least some of the time if I can get to a place of accepting that I have to live as a person with VI, vision impairment. Um, okay, this segment is already almost 11 minutes, and as said, um, I have a way to caption these videos now, the unscripted longer videos to air on YouTube, but um, it takes a long time, and so it's easier to do little fragments at a time, so I will end this here, and I will be back soon. All right, hope you're all doing well. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor and hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. All right, thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. Lahitra out. Bye.